Welcome back to Network to Code's Nautilbot installation series, where we guide you through an installation of Nautilbot. In our second video, we'll walk through some customizations and potential issues to be aware of when deploying Nautilbot into production. So the first step that many users ask is, how do I make my installation of Nautilbot production worthy? The First step to be aware of when we are looking at making Nautilbot production worthy is the way that we wish to have it deployed. The standard methodology for deploying Nautilbot using the Docker Compose project as it is now is to use the dev server. This is to make it easier for developing any custom applications that you wish to use with Nautilbot. This command is defined within the Docker Compose project. Within the environments folder, you will find a collection of Docker Compose files that are used by the invoke commands to determine which services are started up depending upon whether you are utilizing Postgres, MySQL, or if you are wanting to deploy using LDAP. As you can see here within the base Docker Compose file, we are defining most of these shared services that are common across all of those potential scenarios. Those would be Nautilbot, the Celery Worker, uh, the Celery Beat, and Redis. As the database might be different depending upon how you wish to deploy this, those are determined by the MySQL or the Postgres files. So as we earlier in our first step, copy the invoke.example.yaml file, we are using the Postgres, the base, and the local files for Compose. So as part of the Postgres, we are loading in our local and our credentials. We then also have a couple settings that might need to be changed depending upon your usage. These, use, these things are your Mac connections, which will define the settings that are the Mac connections that are allowed into your Postgres database. You would also potentially want to change the command that is used here. So as I was stating previously, the standard deployment for Nautilbot is as a development server. So we utilize the Nautilbot server run server command. This runs Nautilbot in as a dev server. And assuming that the Nautilbot debug command is set to true, we'll perform any custom static file fixups and redirects required to allow access. This enables access to Nautilbot without the use of a reverse proxy or threading service like Uwiski. When you are wishing to make this production though, it is suggested that you change this command to the Nautilbot server run server command and point to the Uwiski INI file. The first step when looking to update your Nautilbot installation to be production worthy is to first determine how you wish to have your Nautilbot service served to your users. The standard way of deploying Nautilbot with the Docker Compose project will deploy Nautilbot using the dev server command that is useful when you are developing applications. However, using the development server in production is not advised due to a known memory leak and the resource consumption of all of the development tools. To change the command that is used for running the Nautilbot service, you would look in the docker-compose.local.yaml file and look for the Nautilbot service and the command key. As you can see here, it is using Nautilbot server, run server, and listening on port 8080. To change this, I would simply comment it out and run it, copy in the Nautabot server start command that then points to a custom uwsgi.ini file that has all of the configuration options for the PyUWSGI 
library and provides the determination for how I wish to have Nautawad hosted. Depending upon how you wish to have Pi Whiskey service Nautobot, you would potentially change the ports here within your compose file. For now, I'm going to leave this listening on port 8080. There is a uwsgi.ini file included in the base Nautobot folder or Nautobot container. However, it is strongly recommended that you change and provide a custom INI file that has been updated to match the resources and the expected usage of your Nautobot installation. The various settings for this are beyond the scope of this video, and I would advise you to go and look at the documentation from Pi WSGI library. For our demonstration here, I am including a simple copy of the UWSGI INI file from our documentation. It is listening for the in socket mode on port 8080 on the local host. And it has none, uh, it has 30 enabled and none of the other settings. With that done, I would then suggest you review any of the settings that are in your local .env file or your creds.env file that you wish to change, specifically any passwords or usernames that are sensitive and must be updated for production. With the use of UWSGI, there is a requirement for the use of a reverse proxy to be placed in front of PI WSGI that will then handle any of the communication between external users and the PI WSGI workers. In addition, it would also handle any static file redirects. This is extremely important and must be in place for any production deployments. It is suggested that you terminate SSL at this proxy. If you wish, you can continue and pass it along to Pi WSGI, but there is no requirement for that. Finally, any other um, changes that you might want to make for this, such as if you wish to have SSL terminate at Pi WSGI at the Nautobot service, you would want to copy in your, um, your SSL certificate and key and mount them in the opt Nautobot folder and ensure that they are set to be read only. We'll then, of course, want to ensure that your PI WSGI INI file is configured to utilize the HTTPS mode and your reverse proxy is configured to also utilize that. You would need to also ensure that any potential ports are enabled or updated within the local compose file. If you wish to utilize anything such as LDAP, LDAP requires the installation of additional libraries for the LDAP communication to be functional within Nautobot. To do this, we advise using the invoke.ldop.yaml file, which will then utilize the docker compose.ldop.yaml file. That points to a custom docker file that will ensure the required libraries for LDAP compatibility be installed. It is important to note that if you are utilizing the development server which is the standard command within this, the run server command. If you disable the Nautobot debug environment variable, if you set that to false, you will see behaviors where static files are not fixed up and you'll potentially see the, um, the normal fix ups that are done by the dev server will not be functional. So you will see odd behavior. It is advised again that you update your command and utilize UWSGI and only utilize the run server command for development of Nautobot services. Now that we have addressed how to make your Nautobot installation production worthy, 
some additional pieces that you might wish to use to customize your installation would be to add Nautobot applications, such as the Nautobot Gold Config, the device onboarding, or potentially the Nautobot SSOT integration library. To do this, you would simply run a poetry add with the relevant application name, and then enable that application within the Nautobot config.py file. There are steps on how to do this on each of the applications. In addition, there is documentation within the Docker Compose project on how to do this. In addition to applications, you can also customize by adding in any jobs that you wish to have added into the instance. You can simply copy these job files into the jobs folder within the local folder, and they will automatically be copied into the container when you run an invoke build. And finally, in addition to applications and jobs, you can also add any required Python packages that you might need, say for Napalm drivers or any other automation frameworks that you wish to enable or have access to within your jobs can be added into the instance by simply, again, using the poetry add command or adding those into the dependencies list within your Pi project TOML file. Again, it is strongly recommended to use the poetry add command when adding any Python packages or applications. But if you are to manually update the Pi project TOML file, always ensure that you run a poetry update to ensure your log file is always up to date with the latest version of your Pi project TOML file. With the customizations and options available to you, we are now going to go and review some potential issues that you might experience when deploying Nautobot. Of the potential issues that you could see, your workers are the source of many of them, depending upon what you are using your Nautobot installation for. Due to the way that the SSOT framework and other frameworks work, you can potentially see a large amount of your resources for the workers utilized and potentially cause the workers to die. It is strongly advised that you have a form of monitoring on your workers and keep an eye on any CPU and memory usage of those workers to be aware of any potential issues that could occur. Other issues that you can potentially run into are regarding database queries that are rather large and can cause timeouts. Typically, we advise that you keep any type of queries to a thousand objects or less. And as your query or data set grows, um, typically we advise you to utilize our GraphQL API endpoints or make smaller queries. As Nautobot is a database dependent application, any kind of optimizations or efficiency um, updates that you can make to your database will benefit Nautobot. Other errors that you might potentially see would be regarding that would be timeouts such as 502s. Those are typically related to your database um, timing out, trying to answer a request. Um, you can modify the connection timeout settings or um, change your query so that it's trying to retrieve less. Um, other issues you might potentially run into would be SSL support not being um, in place, which can be addressed by reinstalling PyUWSKI in the Docker file. Um, there was, were some files in Autobot where that was accidentally removed. Um, but any recent version should have that resolved. In conclusion, in this second part of the Nautobot installation series, we have gone over the customizations that are available to you with this Docker with the Docker Compose project. Those customizations include how do you make the environment production worthy? How do you install applications? How do you add jobs? And how do you add Python packages to your Nautobot installation?
We have also gone over any potential issues that you might put, that you might run into when you are running an Autobot or deploying it. I just wanted to say thank you for joining us for our second installation video. If you've encountered any issues, please feel free to reach out to us via our public Slack channel or refer to our official documents on Nautilbot. Be sure to join us for our next video when we cover populating data into Nautilbot.